Hi folks, welcome to this episode of Hit the Mahogany. The halcyon days of silent movies have long gone. We won't talk about The Quiet Place, that's a separate type of movie. <laughs> Scary. But that history, whatever it is, we can see turning up in things today, such as cocktails. And back in 1922, there was a Rudolf Valentino film by the name of Blood and Sand. And perchance, the name of a cocktail of the same turned up in Harry Craddock's Savoy cocktail book by in the 1930s. 1930. So in this episode, we are going to be doing the Blood and Sand. Now at the time I'm doing this episode, it's hot. You know, it's July uh, here in the area I'm living in, in uh, the States. I was thinking about doing a tiki drink or something a little bit lighter, something to cool us down. But the thing is, I haven't done an episode for a couple of weeks. Why? Because I've actually been over in Scotland. And during that trip, I actually took a little trip up to uh, the Orkney Islands. And in Orkney, there are a couple of primary distilleries there. One of them is Scapa and the other one is Highland Park. A little bit of history about Scapa was actually mothballed back in the uh, 1980s. And you couldn't actually get any of their whiskey and there hadn't been any production. And what they had uh, wasn't readily available. And I think they restarted production. When did they uh, start? I think it might have been about 2008. I was asking about that. But the production that had been occurring, you can actually now get your hands in bottle of Scapa. So thankfully, while I was up there, I had a bottle from about 25 years ago, from the last time I was there. Uh, and I managed to get my hands on a bottle of the Scapa. I haven't opened this one yet. But in addition to that distillery, I took a little trip to the uh, Highland Park distillery. And uh, went on a tour there. I did that 25 years ago as well. They've got a few issues going on with their production due to somebody with uh, a, 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 a truck with the crane above it hitting one of the... Uh, gantries that goes across the road impacted the production and not actually producing anything just now. We went on the tour, tasted a few things. Basically the upshot is there, tasted whiskey, so I'm going to have to do a whiskey cocktail. What haven't I done? Well, Blood and Sand was one that I kept forgetting to actually do. Penicillin, by the way. One Sam Ross, give that one a shot. That is absolutely fantastic. Got a video for that one as well, okay. And then of course you could try highballs with whiskey in there as well. Quite a few cocktails out there with whiskey. So Highland Park, they've got quite a few expressions now. Last time I was there, I got a bottle of their 18 year old. This is empty. I haven't been able to get, well, you can get your hands on it now, but I wanted to get one over in Orkney and then I actually wanted to get it in duty free because I could save some money there and lo and behold, they were sold out in duty free. But what I did get is I got the Highland Park full volume. Now, for this cocktail that we're actually doing, you really don't want a heavily peated whiskey. You don't want to detract from the other flavours. However, fuck it. If you want one of those, use it. Use whatever you like. So the Highland Park, this, uh, the full volume one, this was actually, uh, this was distilled in 1999 and it was bottled in uh, 2017. So this is really a 17-year-old uh, whiskey. It's interesting, it doesn't actually state it in, uh, in that format on there. And uh, I forgot to ask why they, they don't do that. I'm not sure if it's just because of the barrels. Now, Highland Park is normally aged in uh, sherry casks, but for this one, they actually used a bourbon cask. And it's very much lighter with respect to the, uh, the smokiness as well. So there's less heat smoke being used in this one. I'm actually like, you should do with many things, and this just gives me an excuse. Why not taste your ingredients by themselves, first of all? Uh, slash, I'll give this one uh, a little taste here, see what it's like. Hmm. Like many, you can add a splash of water. I think this was uh, it's 47 or 48 percent. If you add a splash of water, it can open up some of the, the, the tasting notes there so that the alcohol doesn't act as much of a uh, anaesthetic on your taste buds and your tongue there and gives a little bit of that. The burn sometimes can take away from some of the other flavours. You get used to it pretty quickly though. Let me taste this one. 
you know, it's great. There's a, there's a lot of vanilla in that, a little bit of weediness, but there's not the tannins from something that's been aged in maybe a darker wood or something that's had some other spirit in it. Well, it's interesting that sometimes you cheat this, you look at the taste of the notes in the back and you're like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah I can taste that. But sometimes it helps you just to point you in the right direction. Now, I, I think of this as bright. I've got citrus here. I think that equates to probably about the same there. Could just be bullshitting. But the interesting one is they talk about coconut. And the funny thing is there's an after, not an aftertaste, but there's a lingering flavour that hangs around there. You have a macaroon, something like that, a coconut macaroon. There's just that flavour that hangs around at the end. And this does have that. And you're like, what is that? You know what? It could be coconut. A little bit sweeter as well. Oh, that's a good one. Not heavily peated. Highland Park, multiple expressions. You'll probably see the 12 year old. Get your hands on the 18 year old. The 12 and 18 are completely different. Completely different uh, flavor profiles. 18's worth it. If I caught my hands on it. All right. And if it, oh, and I did go on the tour and we did do the tasting, which is why I have the Highland Park tasting glass here as well. All right. Enough of me going on about the Highland Park here. Ah, you know what? Let's go on a little bit further. All right. Enough of watching me doing that. All right. Blood and sand. Equal parts. Not too difficult. Start off with whiskey. I'm not going to waste that. Where did my... Sugar go. Oh, come on. Oh, there it is. So what, what we're going to do for this one is one and a half. Uh, no, three quarters. We're going to do three quarters for each one. So that's going to be, I'm going to do two, so that's going to be one and a half. Don't want to waste that, do we? Right, so one and a half ounces of our whiskey. Now you don't want, if you want, you can use a blended one. Something that's not too heavily, as I mentioned, too heavily peated. Uh, you should get away nicely with that. As I said, use whatever you want. Sweet vermouth. One and a half, or three quarters for each one, so one and a half in total. Mm. Now, as you're actually going around, if you have an opportunity to go to uh, a distillery over in Scotland and you go on the tours, you know, so whiskey is all made the same, pr primarily. You got malt, you know, you got barley, malt it, water, yeast, and then how you dry it, how you actually, actually, how you dry the malt things can affect the, uh, the 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 amount of peat that you're using there. Of course, some of the peat in the water as well, and then what the barrels are actually put in. So it's it's pretty sta it's standard. It is you're distilling. You know, you're generally using pot stills as well. But when you go on a tour, how do you make that? the distillery's own. Well, it's the story behind that distillery. How long's that distillery been around? What's the history behind it? Who's been working at it? Who are all those characters that have been around, you know, for a couple of hundred years or for however long, 300 years, whatever, have been around distilling that, passing down the recipe from one generation to another. And it's that, when you go on a tour, it's that person that is doing that presentation is the one that draws you in. They're the one that actually put the history around it. It's not the name. The name does fuck all. Absolutely nothing. It is that history and how that's actually presented. And just a little bit around about that. Oh, now I'm off on something else. The, the Scottish Malt Whiskey Tasting Society. When you go there, uh, you, you can look up their website. You know, they, they have a couple of tasting places across. Uh, they've got the vaults down in, in Edinburgh. But when you go in there, you cannot ask for whiskey by brand. What they're going to ask you is, what is the flavour profile that you actually like? And what they'll do is they'll try and give you, they'll give you a whiskey that matches your preferences or if you want to try something completely different. And you'll actually see <coughs> their bottles that they have from their bottlings, they're all numbered. There's no brands on there. They don't want you to be swayed by marketing and that naming convention. Now, that's not to say I'm not going against the name of anything at all. You need a name. You need a brand. 
but how that gets marketed and how you perceive that and how you think you're going to like it, is that already making you decide what you want to have or not have without even tasting it? Just think through that, the power of that. Anyway, that's why when you're tasting it, the name's not so important, you know? You just know, now that I've tasted that, you know what, I like that. You know? All right, cherry hearing. This is actually used in a, uh, a couple of other cocktails as well. One that is really good in, Singapore Sling. You've probably had a Singapore Sling, it's probably been crap. Seriously, go out, make one yourself, get yourself cherry hearing. If not, good cherry brandy, another cherry brandy will do the trick, okay? Uh, cherry hearing is actually Dutch, it can be a little bit tricky to get your hands on. I wasn't looking for it in the, the play, uh, my uh, local boozerama, but uh, just one day there was just a lonely bottle sitting on the shelf there and uh, I found it. So that was three, quarter of a, three quarters of an ounce, one and a half of that. Now why cherry hearing? And then the final ingredient, I'll talk about that, blood orange juice. Well this was to sort of reflect the colour of the blood within that 1922 film the, uh, about the, the bullfighter. And that's why you've got something like the cherry hearing, which is that a darker, redder color, and then you're using blood orange. Now, of course, orange juice, definitely, but you're getting that color. You can get away with orange juice, but get your hands on it. If you can get your hands on blood orange juice, use it. It's gonna to add to the color. Anyway, this was pre-measured. Three quarters each, so that was one and a half in total. We have our ingredients together. I've still got ice, even with all that talking. All right. Let's get this chilled down. A little bit more. It'll be good. Lid on. Let's get it shaken up. Cold. And then we get wiped up there. All right. No, no, no. Can you use a coop? Definitely. See a lot of places will use the coop there. Refresher. There's a coop for you. One style of coop. I'm just going to use a cocktail glass here just now for this. Why not? Put it in whatever you want. Uh, of course, a rocks glass wouldn't work quite so well for this one. All right, let's get this puppy poured out and see what we have. And again, in all uh, truthfulness, I have not tasted one of these before. I'm looking forward to this. You know what this is going to be like? cleaned up. There we go. Garnish. Simple. Orange peel. Oh, I spressed that over the top there. Oh, that looked good. Same here. Can you hear it? I could hear that one there. Why? It had bubbles in the top of the, the cocktail there and then as the oils hit it, you could just hear it going Psh, like that. So it doesn't look like much, but you do get the oils that come out there. All right. Blood and sand. If you get a chance to go over to Scotland, check out the beaches. Maybe sit there and have a blood and sand anyway, because they are very, very nice beaches. Uh, not something you're going to go running around in with your uh, budgie smugglers on too much, though, particularly in Orkney and further up north. It's bloody cold. That is one of the, uh, that's an interesting, yeah, that's an interesting one. You'll see the reactions that I have to various cocktails. Now this, let me go through this one. I think it needs a lighter, Molly crack. There's a bit of richer flavour there. Could maybe do with a lighter one. That's coming through pretty heavily. Cherry hearing adds a nice balance. 
the whiskey's there. It's kind of hidden behind all the other flavours. Sweet as well. Now once you start tasting a few more times, you get it coming through. Of course, the mistake I made is I just drank a few nips of, uh, took a few sips of a, a nip of whiskey there. So I know what I was going to expect. Or my taste buds were like, you're going to get whiskey in this. Now, wait a minute, that isn't what I just tasted. But this is very good. It's quite refreshing. You know what? It's interesting. There's a little bit of uh, I don't know who came up with this, whether it was Harry Craddock or not. But if I think about this, there's like a Spanish aspect to it. What, what do I mean? So, something like, uh, you know, a Spanish red wine. Or, yeah, I'm just trying to think. There's something about that. I could just drink, you know, I could drink this with tapas or something of that type. There's just something a little bit more southern and continental, even although it has the Scotch whiskey in it. Maybe even the idea of sangria because of the fruit in it. You've got a type of wine. You've got some type of fruit in there. I mean, you've got some other spirits in there as well. That's pretty damn good, actually. Sweet one. I'm not one for the sweeter drinks, definitely. But if you're looking to introduce somebody to maybe a whiskey cocktail and they're not ready for something as spicy as a penicillin, which is just phenomenal, this is a very good cocktail, definitely. All right, everybody. Uh, cheers and uh, enjoy your uh, blood and sands. Mm. Cheers. <laughs>